Seven silent visitors are now approaching Earth, and one of them doesn't belong here. Three Eye Atlas, a stranger from another star. It's only the third interstellar object we've ever seen, but it's unlike anything that's come before. By the end of 2025, seven comets will sweep through the inner solar system in just six months, a convergence so rare so statistically impossible that astronomers are still trying to explain it. Some call it coincidence, others aren't so sure. Because at the heart of this celestial parade, one object stands apart, 3 Eye Atlas leads them, and no one knows why. Is it an echo of ancient collisions, or something we were never meant to see? One thing is certain, this isn't normal. Seven visitors are approaching Earth, and the one in front may carry more than ice and dust. It may carry a message, or a warning, or the kind of silence that says everything. Every night, while the world sleeps, a network of silent eyes scans the sky. Machines without breath, algorithms without rest, perched on mountaintops in Hawaii, Chile, and South Africa. Telescopes like PanStars and Atlas sweep the heavens, not to admire stars, but to detect what moves. These aren't romantic tools. They're trackers, trained to spot the slightest shift. A single pixel that drifts from frame to frame can trigger alarms, because comets don't shine. They drift. Pan stars and Atlas cover most of the sky every two or three nights. Their software compares each image with a cosmic memory, a database of the unmoving. And when something shifts, an alert goes out. Telescopes lock in. A new visitor is logged. 20 years ago, finding a comet meant long nights, luck, and patience. Now it happens in real time. Each detection is sent to the Minor Planet Center, where faint wanderers are named, cataloged, and archived by the hundreds. But bright comets are rare. In a typical season, maybe two or three appear. Most are too distant, too faint to matter. That's why. What's happening now doesn't make sense. In late 2025, the system lit up. One comet, then another, then more. Seven in total, all inbound, all within six months. And one glowing green wasn't even from here. The watchers struggled to keep up. Engineers who once let the code run alone began watching each alert manually because this wasn't just unusual. It was nearly impossible. Statistical models show this shouldn't happen. With current detection rates, the expected number is two or three per half year. Seven, that's a one in a thousand outlier, not a product of better cameras, not a fluke of software, something else. Comets are governed by gravity, by chaos, by the deep randomness of ancient debris. But this pattern, this clustering, felt unnatural, too tight, too deliberate. Some scientists suggest a distant collision in the Oort cloud. Others whisper about coincidence. But the truth is, no one knows. The sky doesn't usually act like this, and that's why this matters. Because these machines were built to warn us, to catch the rare, the dangerous, the unpredictable. And suddenly, the unpredictable has become routine. We asked the sky for signals. Now, we're flooded. Seven comets, all real, all inbound, and at the front is one that breaks the rules. Its name is 3 Eye Atlas. And it doesn't come alone. Among the seven visitors approaching Earth, one stands apart, not just in trajectory or brightness or chemistry, but in origin. Its name is 3i Atlas, and it's not from here. The name says it all. 3i stands for Third Interstellar. Only two objects before it have ever been confirmed to come from outside our solar system. Oumuamua in 2017 and Borisov in 2019. Both were strange, both left questions. But 3i Atlas is something else entirely. Bigger, brighter, and far more active than either of its predecessors. It was first detected by the Atlas Survey, a telescope network built to catch anything fast, bright, or incoming. At first, it was just a faint flicker in the data, a drifting speck among millions, but the orbit didn't fit. The trajectory was hyperbolic, too fast, too far, too clean. It wasn't bound to the sun. It had come from interstellar space, and it wasn't staying. As the days passed, more telescopes turned toward it, 
observatories on Earth, instruments in orbit, even the James Webb Space Telescope, a million miles from Earth, was called into action. Alongside Hubble, the two most powerful eyes ever built locked on to the same object that had never happened before. No other interstellar visitor had received this kind of attention, and what they saw didn't make sense. The coma, the hazy atmosphere around the comet's solid core, was enormous. Some estimates put it at over 700,000 kilometers across, nearly half the diameter of the Sun, more than 50 times wider than Jupiter. A glowing green envelope of gas and dust pulsing and shifting as sunlight hit its surface. Inside that cloud, the nucleus, the actual body of the comet, was small, just a few kilometers wide. Yet from that tiny core, vast jets of gas were erupting. Webb measured the rate of dust ejection at 6 kilograms per second for fine grains and up to 60 kilograms per second for larger chunks. That's the weight of a bowling ball launched into space every second. And that wasn't even the strange part, because when the James Webb Telescope looked at the composition of that coma, it found something we'd never seen before. Most comets are dominated by water. As they approach the sun, the ice sublimates, turning directly into vapor, creating tails of gas and light. But 3i Atlas is different. The ratio of carbon dioxide to water in this comet is 8 to 1, 8 parts CO2 for every one part H2O. That's not just rare, that's unheard of. No comet ever measured has shown a ratio this extreme. Why? Some scientists believe 3i Atlas may have formed in a part of its home system so cold, so distant, that water never had a chance to freeze in quantity, only CO2. Others think it might be covered in a thick crust of dust, an insulating shell that's hiding water ice deeper inside. If that crust breaks as it approaches the sun, the chemistry could shift dramatically. But then there's another possibility, that this isn't a comet at all, at least not in the way we understand them. Avi Loeb, the Harvard astrophysicist known for suggesting Oumuamua might have been an alien probe, has raised similar questions about 3i Atlas. He's asked why its approach seems so clean, why it's following a trajectory only five degrees off the plane of the planets, almost as if it's moving through the same highway we use to launch probes. He's pointed out how unlikely it is for a random interstellar object to pass close to Venus, Mars, and Jupiter in sequence. The odds of that kind of alignment, he says, are 1 in 20,000. That doesn't prove anything, but it doesn't go away either. Then there's the tail. Most comets grow two tails as they near the sun, a dust tail and an ion tail, one broad and golden, pushed by sunlight, the other straight and blue dragged by the solar wind. But part of 3i Atlas's dust seems to be pointing toward the sun, not away from it. That shouldn't happen. It suggests particles that are heavier than normal or bound by forces we don't yet understand. And then there's the color, that eerie green glow. It comes from diatomic carbon, a molecule that reacts under ultraviolet light. But in 3i Atlas, the glow is unusually strong, saturated, almost unnatural. Scientists say it could be due to the object's chemical richness, or it could mean something else entirely. Something about the way this object was formed, or what it's made of, or what it left behind. Because here's the twist. After it passes the sun, 3i Atlas is expected to leave a trail of dust behind, and simulations suggest that trail might intersect Earth's orbit in mid-2026. Which means, for the first time in history, we may witness a meteor shower made of interstellar material. Grains of dust older than the sun, born in a different star system, burning through our atmosphere at thousands of kilometers per hour. Scientists are already planning how to track it. Radar arrays, airborne detectors, maybe even sample recovery. Because if we can catch even one of those grains, we'll have something no one has ever touched before, a piece of another world. And yet, even with all this data, all this attention, 3i Atlas remains a mystery, a green flame drifting across the solar system, question with no clear answer. Maybe it's just a comet, a beautiful, exotic fragment of a dead system flung across space by chance. Or maybe it's more, a messenger, a relic, a signal. Whatever it is, it won't stay. Like the others, it will vanish. It will swing around the sun and drift back into the dark. And when it goes, it will take its secrets with it unless we figure them out first.
The sun doesn't just shine, it breathes, it spits, it storms, and when it does, comets pay the price. Every comet in the 2025 lineup will pass close enough to the sun to feel that fury. Solar wind, ultraviolet radiation, coronal mass ejections, giant magnetic shock waves launched into space like invisible tsunamis. And when those waves hit, something happens, something sudden, something violent. A comet's ion tail is a fragile thing, made not of dust, but of charged gas. Ions stripped from molecules in the coma, then carried away by the solar wind. It's like a windsock, always pointing directly away from the sun, no matter how the comet moves. But that also makes it vulnerable. When a coronal mass ejection, a CME, slams through the solar system, it drags the sun's magnetic field with it. And if a comet is in the way, the magnetic lines around its tail can snap. One moment, a sleek blue line stretches for millions of kilometers. The next, it's been severed cleanly, instantly, leaving a floating ghost behind while the comet forges a new tail in its place. These are called tail disconnection events. Rare, sudden, beautiful. And in 2025, they might not be rare at all. Why? Geometry. All seven comets are arriving on paths that lie close to the ecliptic, the flat plane where Earth and the planets orbit. That's also where most CMEs are launched. So with so many comets crisscrossing the sun's firing line, the odds of a tail being sliced jump dramatically. Normally, a bright comet has maybe a 10 to 20% chance of losing its ion tail during perihelion. But simulations show that with this many comets stacked on similar paths, we could see two or even three tail disconnections in a single week. It's not just theory. In April 2007, NASA's stereo spacecraft caught it happening live. A CME smashed into comet Enki. Its ion tail was snapped away on camera, a clean break, drifting off like smoke in the wind. That footage became legend, a case study in how the sun reshapes everything it touches. Now, with seven comets and multiple spacecraft watching, scientists are hoping to catch more. Missions like SOHO and STEREO are already adjusting their priorities. These satellites orbit in positions that let them stare directly at the sun's edge, the perfect vantage point for watching comets skim through the solar corona. Their instruments, designed for solar storms, will capture high-resolution images of tails forming, twisting, snapping apart. From Earth, we might only see the glow, but from space, we'll witness the battle. Because that's what this is, a test of endurance. As each comet approaches perihelion, it runs a gauntlet of solar forces. Ultraviolet light breaks molecular bonds. Solar wind strips the coma. Magnetic fields twist and snap the tails. Some comets emerge with scars. Some don't survive at all. And the drama isn't just visual. These events reveal how space weather truly works. How the sun's invisible hands reach across millions of kilometers to reshape objects in real time. Watching a tail get severed isn't just spectacle. It's science. It tells us how fast a CME is moving how dense, how strong the magnetic field was. It's like watching the solar wind write in glowing blue ink. That matters more than ever, because space weather doesn't just affect comets, it affects Earth. It hits satellites, it knocks out power grids, it distorts GPS. And understanding it requires real-time data, moments where magnetic structures are disrupted and revealed. In 2025, we'll have those moments, dozens of them, maybe more. Comets like 3i Atlas, Swan, and Atlas K1 will swing dangerously close to the sun. Their tails, vast and volatile, will be the first to show signs of solar activity. Kinks, twists, breaks. For scientists, these are warnings, markers of storms in progress. And for the rest of us, they're a reminder that the sun isn't still. It's alive, and we're inside its reach. The seven comets of 2025 aren't just celestial visitors, they're instruments tools. Their tails will map the magnetic architecture of space itself, and every snap, every shift, every flash of disconnection will be a signal. Something is coming, and the sky is the first to know. Something is gathering out there, not one, not two, but seven cold travelers threading their way through the gravity of planets and the fire of the sun. Among them, one born in another system, an outlier, a whisper from the stars. Three Eye Atlas leads them, a green ghost exhaling carbon instead of water, dragging behind it the chemistry of a place we'll never visit. Its coma, 
wide enough to swallow Earth whole, glows like a beacon across the void. And yet, it says nothing, just moves, just burns, just vanishes. Behind it, the others follow. Swan, Lemon, Atlas K-1, quiet visitors and bright showstoppers, their tails torn by solar storms, their paths bending gently under the weight of light, all of them drawn into this brief, perfect alignment, a season of spectacle, a parade of silence. We don't know why it's happening. The statistics say this shouldn't occur, not like this, not all at once, but it is. And as the machines struggle to keep up and scientists scramble for time on telescopes, the rest of us are left with one job, to look up, to step outside in the soft hours before dawn or after dusk and wait for the sky to move. Because this won't happen again, not in your lifetime, not like this, not with one of them born between the stars. And when it passes, we'll be left with the question that always lingers behind great cosmic events. What did we miss? If you made it this far, you're one of us. The ones who wonder, who listen, who wait in the dark for the sky to speak. So stay with us. There are more stories coming, more questions that don't have answers yet. Subscribe to this channel if you haven't already. And leave a like if this made you feel anything. Awe, fear, silence. In the end, these comets will vanish, their tails fading into night, their dust swept across orbits we'll never see. But the sky, the sky remembers, and so do we.